Thanks for tuning in to Look at My JPEG, the podcast that discusses NFT, DeFi, and NFT financialization. This is your host, Xerox Jose, the founder of NFT Perp. The reason why I want to do this podcast is because there's just not enough people talking about NFT financializations. In this podcast, you can expect us to invite guests that are builders, founders, even investors that are deep in the NFT financialization space. We'll discuss their story, what they're building, and how you can get involved. So, thanks for tuning in. Go. What's up, Luca? Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. I'm sure you're uh, uh, welcome to the show. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty casual today. Yeah, we're pretty casual Friday. No big deal. Uh, pumped to have you here, Luca. Uh, we're excited to talk to you today, and and uh, this. This space will be recorded and uploaded to our Spotify account. Um, and, you know, moving forward, we'll be interviewing a lot of different uh, founders. Um, and we're excited to be talking one of the first collections uh, this podcast uh, has spoke, spoken with. And Pudgy Penguin uh, will be the first one. So, Luca, thanks for joining the show. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I guess, uh, I guess like, let's jump right into the... Uh to the stuff you've probably been talking about the last couple of days, but, uh, what, uh, <clears throat> maybe let's, uh, let's jump into the Walmart toy placement. Um, and, and really like what you've learned in the last like 48, 72 hours. Um, and why, why this is such a big moment, not only for pudgy, but like web three and, and NFTs more broadly. Yeah. I think when you look at this moment, it, kind of is on the backs of the industry getting fed up with extractive uh, value and tactics. I think when you kind of see what we're trying to do here, I think in the depths of the bear, the best thing that you can do for your community is add value. And that value add, I think, is through uh, emotional connection. I think it's through awareness. And I think it's ultimately ultimately uh through sustainability and so it's kind of weird how it shaked out but i think ultimately if nfts want to go where we all want them to go this is the direction that i think a lot of projects need to go in which is one that is additive and not dilutive and not at the expense of their core community members and so you know when it, when you think about what it means to create value in a, in an NFT ecosystem or in a community. Uh, I thought about this last night when I went to bed. And so most people haven't heard this one yet, but you know, what really pudgy toys is going to do is it's going to expand our community. It's going to add more people uh, into the huddle in some sort of shape, way or form. And that's going to bring value to the core community members because that's more friends. That's more networks. That's more connections. That's more, opportunities uh that's more places to stay when you go into different countries or states that's more uh you know places and people you can hang out with and ultimately the people who own the nft are going to have that status within this community that everybody knows that they are not only the first believers and the early adopters but they're also um, the most grand and prestigious collectors in the ecosystem and so when you look at just what it means to create value i think value today has been so uh, segmented to transactional value, and that value will always remain important. But you know, in a in a market where transactional value is dim and almost non-existent, I think these are the best things that you can do. And so, uh, I'm super excited to see people sweeping their local Walmart and giving these toys to their friends and family members. And I know some people are going out and buying toys and just donating them to 
you know, certain groups and people in need. And I think it's just beautiful to watch to see this whole space kind of come together over what I believed was what I think the space has been wanting for a couple of months now. And so uh, feels good. Uh, I personally think um, one of the interesting things that you guys have been so focusing on so much and the, the pudgies are, they're so inviting and so welcoming. Um, they could be for your kids. They could be for your friend. They could be, you know, for your, for your nieces, uh, your nephews. And you mentioned early on that a lot of the NFT, you know, uh, events over, over the last couple of months, what have we been seeing over the, really over the six months or even to a year? Um, it's been very, like you said, a like very value extracting and, 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 over the last three months, especially um, within an NFT space, there's, it's been way more PVP, and we're, we're seeing that with with meme coins and, and other uh, markets as well. And, and I think what you guys have done here with with toys and puppies going to Walmart, it's 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 expanding outside of this little tiny ecosystem where people are uh, PVP over each other. So um, just on that alone, I think this is very. Uh, yeah, just really hats up to you guys for that. Yeah, and I think another cool thing that you guys did was um, you brought other collections along for the ride. So, like, the uh, D-Gods t-shirt, the uh, Snouts cap, Creeps cap. Um, why, why was that important for you guys to do? I, I think it's, like, really cool and haven't really seen that a lot in the space. I think ultimately you can talk the talk or you can walk the walk. Right. You can say you're about Web3 winning. You can say this is a moment for the industry. You can say you want to see other people win. And those are really good keywords that I've caught myself saying time and time again. And what better way than to actually walk that walk rather than talk the talk. And I think that was just something that was low hanging fruit, something that was easy for us to do. You know, we're not the community that will partner on whitelists and shill things. And that's not that's not in our in our company guidelines. But what we can do is. If there's a moment to try to uplift others and bring awareness to others, we will take that moment. And so um, it seemed like low hanging fruit. And I'm kind of excited that uh, that in our internal discussions, that's what we came to. We were going to do a bunch of cool Web2 brands. Uh, but I thought that seemed uh, after we actually kind of went far down that rabbit hole and have quite a bit of traits cooked up. So that will be something we release later down the line. But uh, in the interim, I'm uh, I'm super happy that we were able to do this. For those that missed the memo, can you share uh, to them like what it is that you're, you're doing? Yeah, when you uh, buy a toy at your local Walmart uh, and you scan the QR code, because every toy that uh, we sell comes with a birth certificate, and on that birth certificate, there's a QR code. And that QR code basically redeems a set of traits in Pudgy World. And so these traits are NFTs. It's through a gas experience. I see David Bailey in the, in the chat. And so a huge shout out to him. He's on the Penguineering team. They're absolutely killing it. And uh, the thought process here is, is when somebody buys a toy who knows nothing about NFTs and knows nothing about Web3 and they scan the QR code and they follow the steps, that they're not only getting exposed to the Pudgy Penguin brand and Pudgy Penguin IP, but they're getting exposed to other brands as well and other IP. And I think uh, that's really important to me, uh, especially from a Web3 perspective. You know, not only do people get the opportunity to experience the Pudgy brand, but they also get the opportunity to experience some other brands as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and I guess um, moving on a little bit. So, um you're, you're, you worked previously at a, at a company called uh, uh, Gel Blaster, right? I, I'm not sure many people probably know this. Um, I'm sure the, the people that have gone deep uh, do, but um, how did that kind of like shape your um, ability to get placement in Walmart, uh, specifically with like the pallet program? And, um, you know, I guess like what's, what's different with working like at a Web2, I guess, uh, or like traditional like toy company versus uh, – building a, a web three IP company. Yeah, I think with gel blaster, Walmart was pretty skeptical and I told them the same thing that uh, I told them for pudgy penguins. I basically said, you know, take a shot on this. It's going to work. And so they made an order and it ended up being one of their most successful, you know, products in, in that specific aisle that they stocked. And so, uh, 
you know, me going back there and telling them the same thing, I think, uh, kind of supported the thesis. And so having a really successful product there one time around definitely makes the process a little bit easier. You know, the activation with Walmart, you know, getting toys on shelf is one thing, getting products on shelf is one thing, uh, but getting that type of program and that many stores via pallets is a whole nother thing. And uh, so I'm really thankful that they were able to support us in that way. Uh, I, I think just alone, people are just, I, I believe, slightly underestimating just the awareness and the credibility that that brings towards this brand. 180 million people walk through a Walmart every single week. If we're in 40% of those stores, you could argue that 20 to 30 million people a week are seeing our brand. Uh, they might not be absorbing it or digesting it the same way as others, but it's a touch point. It's a familiarity point that I think is going to be very important in the future. And it's credibility, right? Like it's, uh, you know, the, the, the brands that you see in these activations in Walmart are a la Star Wars or Hello Kitty or Squishmallows uh, or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And now it's Pudgy Penguins. And so, you know, this isn't a toy on a shelf in the crevice. This space was downloaded via spacesdown.com. Visit to download your spaces today. Somewhere. Uh, this is front and center for millions, tens of millions of people to see uh, every single week. And I think it kind of goes ultimately into our grand plan, uh, which is the plan of touch points and just getting people familiar with our brand. Love that. Um, so I'm a pudgy holder myself and I'm based in Europe. Um, my Walmart experience is probably, probably next to zero. Uh, what are you thinking in terms of like for the pudgies that are not in the U.S.? Like, okay, first of all, like how many holders are in the U.S. that you, uh, do you guys know like the percentage? And like, do you guys have plans for like the Walmart strategy before the rest of the EU? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely a, a global community. Uh, in Singapore, we did two events. One event had 600 people. Another event had 1,000 people. Uh, we did uh, an event in Malaysia. We had a couple hundred people. We did an event in Seoul. We probably had 100 people. Uh, Europe right now, I know they're hanging out in Oktoberfest, and there's probably a good amount of people who have consolidated there and are hanging out and doing the Pudgy Penguin uh embodying the pudgy penguin ethos and having a good time. Uh, from our perspective, it is very much, uh, you know, our global distribution strategy, I think, has also been underestimated. I think I haven't done a good job championing that. But when I went to Singapore, I went to Time Zone. I saw pudgy penguins in the arcade. Uh, I went to Takashi, uh, Takashiya. It's a mall. Uh, saw pudgy penguins on shelves there. Mind you, this is on the completely other side of the world. EB Games in Australia sold out of pudgy toys. Uh, we have FNAC in uh, Spain that I know half of the stores are sold out of pudgy toys. I know uh, that we are in a couple places in Europe right now, but we're going to announce a pretty big one here, I think, in a couple days uh, of us launching in what I think is one of Europe's biggest toy stores. I know it's UK's biggest toy store, so I'm excited for that. Uh, and we have a couple other, you know, pretty big distribution networks within the U.S., FYE, Hot Topic uh, soon here, uh, and a couple others. And so the idea, I think, here is becoming a little clear over the course of time. I'm committed to being the most well-known and familiar uh, Web3 IP in the world. I think it would be hard to argue that there's only one that probably has more awareness, and that one is Bored Ape. Uh, and right now, I think it's a, it's a game of awareness between Bored Apes and Pudgy Penguins, and I don't think there's a close third. Uh, and so it's really just a matter of how can we, you know, permeate and proliferate the character and proliferate the IP. And I think ultimately that trickles down. You don't see it in real time, but I think the space has been plagued with a disease that I don't think is uh, healthy, which is this disease or this desire for just instant short-term gratification, which leads to one set of users uh, having a great time and then another set of users being burned and screwed. And so I think the roadmap and the plan that we're on is one that is uh, positioned for long-term success and long-term growth uh, and sets up a pattern for everyone to succeed and not leaving somebody on the other side of that trade uh, in a really unfortunate scenario. And so uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm confident that this will work the way that I believe it's going to work. I believe that eventually the industry is going to kind of see the writing on the wall that there's a, a couple projects that are here to stay and that you know are going to be here to stay. 
Uh, and I think we're telling that story that we're one of the strongest in that regard. And so um, we, we've done a really good job distributing this character all over the country, not only domestically, but also internationally. And uh, every day, more and more people are getting exposed to the huddle. And there's very few things I think you can ask for uh, when the market is the way that it is today. Carrying all of uh, the a- NFTs on-, on your back recently it's uh yeah i mean i think you're kind of like spot on there um so um maybe like shifting gears a little bit i I know this is like a a big part about um i think you like um but really pudgy more broadly i I guess like let's talk a little bit about the culture um specifically i'd like to know like how do you how do you build a culture in public um, building in, in public is, is exhausting. I'm sure you're exhausted today um, after the large announcement, but um, I'm sure it's a combination of having a great core team, um, you know, crowdsourcing ideas from the community, but being selective with, um, you know, choosing what to implement. Um, so, yeah, just curious, like, how you do it, how you think about building in public and, um, you know, why it's important to, to the Pudgy community more broadly. Yeah, I think it's important to the pudgy community, and I also think it's just broadly important for just the Web3 universe. Um, I'm committed to getting to my goals. I'm committed to succeeding. And, you know, what does the space want, I think, is something that I ask myself every single day. And based on what I think they want and based on what I see the narratives being, you know, unleashed out on Twitter and other social platforms – I think it's really my job to be a good leader and fulfill those wants. And so the, you know, the the space in the community wants collaboration. They want communication. They want transparency. If that's what they want, I'm going to give it to them. Uh, I think it's really my job to understand what levers do people want and, uh, and to be able to pull those levers to the best of my ability. I think uh, that's the best thing that you can do in an industry like this. And uh, that's very much our focus right now. So with, um, with listening to community and building in public, um, I think a lot of times it's tough to kind of balance your your inputs from community and also the core team's like um, interests. Uh, sometimes, you know, community and team and investors have different uh, alignments and how do you balance all of them? And do you find it difficult uh, when it comes to building in public uh, in terms of getting feedback and not meeting expectations? Yeah, I think managing expectations is important. I uh, try to do that, again, to the best of my ability. But when it comes to, you know, who who has the say in this org, it always stops and starts with the community. No investors sit on my cap table, so we, we raised via safe. And, you know, I obviously take feedback, but at the end of the day, I will always do what I think is in the best interest of the community. I will always do that. I, I, I think you've seen it time and time again you lose the faith and the trust of the community and you're done, right? At a certain point, there's things I can't control, right? I can't control, um, you know, where, where the floor price sits today, at least outside of just showing up every day and trying my absolute hardest. But at the end of the day, if I lose the trust in, of the community, this thing goes to, this goes to zero. And I've seen it time and time again. There's some projects right now that made some mistakes 12 months ago. And they're absolutely crushing it today. And because they lost the trust of their community, it just means nothing. It's almost like a a means to an end. It's a slow grind towards nothing. And so it's, it's like one of those things, if you cheat on, you know, sometimes when you cheat on somebody, it can like cheat on a girlfriend or something. There's a chance for forgiveness, but typically it just leads to zero. Um, There's obviously that one or 2% chance it doesn't, but you know, and, I, I, I think it's probably that not a healthy it. relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah um, given you have like eight minutes left before you got to jump. Um, if you were going to give someone advice today for like starting a uh, NFT IP project or NFT project more broadly, like what would you tell them? And today in this environment, your only priority should be how do I give to this group and how do you give them more resources, more networking opportunities, more new community members. And the one thing you have to avoid like the plague is 
you cannot take from them. This is not the environment to take. This is not the moment where you should be thinking about how do you take money from people. Um, I think that that's really a, the caveat here. In this environment, the best thing that you can do is tell a story of giving and not tell a story of taking. And so that would be my advice for anybody wanting to build something right here, right now. So I think, yeah, with appreciate you sharing that. I think the, the mentality of, of giving of abundance is, is ultimately what's going to be attractive. Um, and especially with this, you know, sort of environment, um, there's really not much else, not much else to take, uh, if you will. Um, most people have pretty dry bags at this point. Um, shifting a little bit, um, wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, NFT finance, a uh, bit of a, a hard, you know, segue into the topic, but, you know, we are an NFT finance uh, project. We're doing perps for NFTs and what are your, what your thoughts on NFT finance is, you know, I know you guys have a, uh, as a collection, you're providing liquidity on AMMs, like um, I believe it's, it's caviar. Um, what are your thoughts on, you know, these decentralized versus decentralized exchanges and, you know, your thoughts on NFT loans and NFT finance in general, as it provides financial, you know, benefits to your holders and people that are looking to enter and exit uh, the collection. Sorry, I, I got like the first half of that. I didn't get the last half. Yeah, no worries. Uh, I was just gonna gonna ask you your thoughts on NFT finance as a, as a vertical. I think you guys have a decent amount of collection uh, liquidity on AMMs like Caviar um, and. Like, what are your thoughts on, you know, people using decentralized exchanges like AMMs, uh, like using Blur? And what are your thoughts on NFT finance as a vertical, like how it, you know, provide value to uh, your holders, uh, like through loans and whatnot? Yeah, I think uh, it's the beauty of tokenization. You can do things that are, are um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful part about this industry. I'm not the best person to talk about it, right? I have... Uh, I have my opinions either which way, but I think at the end of the day, it's a free market. And I think this type of tooling is necessary for some. And so I think every piece of infrastructure that we can build uh, is important. And uh, ultimately, it's going to uh, lead to more users who are attracted uh, based on you know different things that I think are important to them. And so to some, this type of stuff is really important to them. To others, it's not. And uh, regardless, I think we should do our best to provide the tooling and the infrastructure to get more people involved. At the end of the day, uh, I don't see it being a net negative. I see all of this uh, type of tooling to be a net positive. Yeah, and for, for those that perhaps don't know, like, uh, Pudgy is actually quite liquid on uh, some of the AMMs uh, out there, like Caviar, and providing a ton of liquidity. And we do talk to a few different market makers, and uh, they also really say good things about Pudgies in terms of like the liquidity uh, pro pro provided from the collection side. Uh, so hats off to you guys for that. Um, so closing off, I would love to ask you. I know you have four minutes left. Uh, with, with regards to uh, five years into the future, like how do you envision uh, Pudgy Penguins? look like as a project as a community and um yeah like what are you what are you thinking in terms of like long term five to ten years yeah just how do we create a brand that tens of millions of people love and enjoy and ultimately i think that is uh that is where we want to go i i believe that everybody will be happy if we can get uh to an industry and to a point where this project is known around the world far and wide. And if we can accomplish that, I think we'll be fine. Love it. Uh, for people in projects that want to collaborate with Pudgies, uh, what do you look for? Uh, and uh, what turns you off? Because uh, you mentioned earlier on that you love to uh, collaborate with projects. So I uh, wanted to ask you, uh, what type of projects do you guys uh, like to collaborate with? Yeah, I think it's just people who show up. I think people who show up uh, are, are the people that I will listen to. I can tell who's working and I can tell who's not. And I have no interest in working with people that I don't think are pushing the barrier. And I have every interest to work with people uh, who are. Love it. Uh, Luca, thank you for your time. I know you have a 
busy a uh, couple of weeks with uh, the recent, uh, you know, Walmart placements. And uh, thank you for your time for joining us. Um, and for those that are listening, uh, make sure you follow Luca's uh, Luca Nets on Twitter and also Touch of Penguins. Thanks again, Luca. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to Look at My JPEG podcast. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your audio podcast from, give us a like, a subscribe if you like the content, and we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.